All right, students, so today's lesson is going to be over 1.3 properties of functions. The last two chapters, we've covered what a function is, how to tell if something is a function or not, different properties of functions such as domain and range and intercepts. And today we're going to learn about another property of functions, which is even and odd functions. Now, functions can either be even, odd, or even neither. There are actually uh, three different ways I'm going to show you today just to distinguish how, uh, which type of function um, a given function is. Now, even functions, there's a more elaborate definition. I'm going to give you just kind of a basic definition, and we'll get more in depth as we go further along. But an even function, a function is considered an even function, um, just looking at the graph, if it is symmetric about the y-axis. And the y-axis is the vertical axis. So if you look at the vertical axis, if it's symmetric on both sides of the y-axis, then it's considered an even function. So that's just a, a simple uh, definition of how to tell if something's an even function. And we'll get more in depth with the definition on the next part. Okay. And function is considered an odd function if it is symmetric about the origin. And the origin, remember, is the point 0, 0. This center point right here is the origin. So if it's symmetric across the origin, which we'll do some examples, it's considered an odd function. And if it meets neither one of these criteria, then it would just be considered a function that is neither odd or even. And that's OK. So what I've done is I've given us, um, that's actually a typo, I should say example number one. There we go. Uh, four different graphs. And what I want us to do is just to go through each one and to determine is if each one is odd or even according to its definition. So the first function, if you look at this first graph, um, if I look at the y-axis, which is right here, the graph does not look exactly the same on the y-axis, on the left side of the y-axis, as it does on, on the right side of the axis. Now, you might be thinking they are similar, and that is true. However, when I say symmetric about the y-axis, if you take the y-axis, it should be a mirror image on the left side and on the right side. Think of it as a flip-flop image. And in that case, it is not. It kind of turns upside down and does some other rotations. It is not a complete side-to-side um, -side reflection, and therefore, it is not an even function. Okay, So it does not meet the first criteria. Let's see if it's an odd function. If I look at the origin, the origin is this center point right here and I look at the bottom quadrant, I should see a reflection symmetry um, across the origin. When I say across, I mean diagonally. So if you look at the shape of this graph down here in the bottom quadrant, and you were to take it and you were to flip it, meaning kind of like an upside down flip, and you're flipping it diagonally on the diagonal quadrant, it is the same exact image um, of the diagonally. So therefore, this would be an example of a graph that's symmetric across this origin, symmetric diagonally. And so therefore, this is considered an odd function. Okay. And then we don't have to test for neither. Um, a function cannot be um, both even and odd. Um, not that I know of. Mm, nope, not that I know of. Um, if you can think of a cool one, though, you can definitely send me one. But off the top of my head, a function cannot be even and odd at the, at the same time. Okay. All right, um, next example, uh, B. We have a graph. And if I look at the y-axis, that's right here. Looking at the left side of the y-axis, the graph reflects side to side. It's a side to side reflection. It goes on the left side of the y-axis and it reflects on the right side of the y-axis, the same exact image. So in this case, this would meet the first qualification and this would be considered an even function. Okay. Next one, part C. Um, if you look on the left side of this y-axis, there's nothing on the left side of the y-axis. However, there is something on the right side of the y-axis. Since there is nothing on the left side, there's no way for it to be a reflection. This y, the right side of the y-axis has this kind of shape, but it's not a reflection on the other side. There's, there's actually not, no part of the graph at all, which in that case means it is not even. 
same thing for odd. If you look at the opposite side of the origin, there is nothing in this bottom quadrant that would be reflective of this top quadrant. So this would be neither even or odd. So you would just put neither. Neither even or odd. And same thing for this last graph. If you look on the left side of the y-axis, there is no part of the graph. And if you look on the bottom side quadrant, there is no part of the graph there. So there's really nothing to reflect. Um, but we do have this single part. So this one as well would be neither even or odd. Now that's just a really quick definition of what an even and odd function is, how to tell if a function is even or odd just by looking at the definition. I want us to get a little bit more in depth about what it means to be an even function or an odd function. So an even function, and here's the formal definition, uh, even function is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, which is what we wrote up here. This means, now what does that actually mean? It means that for every point x, y on the graph, there's also the point negative x, y on the graph. And another, another way to say it is f of negative x equals f of x. So basically what that means, if, there, if you want to test for a function as even or odd algebraically, you could easily just take every x value, make it a negative x value, and see if you still end up with the same uh, f of x value. Now, uh, we'll do an example so that makes a little bit more sense, but this is the algebraic way to tell if something is an even or odd function. Okay, And I'll kind of put it into words here. You would replace your x with a negative x and see if you get the same result you get same output result. It's kind of the algebraic way to tell if something is an even function. Okay. Um, if you want to tell if something is an odd function algebraically, let's say you don't have the graph, you just have an equation, and you want to tell is this an odd function algebraically, um, that just means is it symmetric with respect to the origin, which we've said earlier. What this means, though, it means that for every point on the graph x comma y, that there's also a point negative x comma negative y on the graph as well. If we want to test for this algebraically, it just means that f of negative x equals negative f of x. And this might not make any sense right now, but I'm just going to write it down and we'll do some examples. What you would do is you would replace all of your x values with a negative x and see if you get a negative output result. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to we're going to use both of these tests for symmetry. So for the next example, it's given us an equation. Now, it does not give us a graph. When we have a graph, we can easily just look at the symmetry and say, "Oh, that's odd, that's even." When we're given a function's equation, we don't have the graph. You could use a graph and calculator. Um, but if you don't have a graph and calculator, there is a way to tell um, if it's an even or odd function algebraically, and that is using these two tests right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test whether the function is even. Test if even. We don't know if it's even, but I'm going to test it out. All right. Now the test to tell if the function is even says that you're just going to take your function, replace your x with a negative x. So I'm going to take this function, and I'm going to replace it with negative x. So instead of x to the third power, this will be negative x to the third power minus 6. Instead of x, I'm going to replace it with a negative x. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to simplify this. Negative x to the third power. What is negative x to the third power? Well, off to the side, let me work that out. Negative x to the third power is just negative x times negative x times negative x, which I know two negatives make a positive, so 
this negative and this negative will make a positive. And then we have we still have one negative left over. A positive times a negative is a negative. So this would just equal negative x to the third power. Okay. So back to our problem. This simplifies to negative x to the third power. Minus 6 times negative x. Negative 6 times a negative x is a positive 6x. And I've simplified as much as I can. Now what I'm going to do is, I've once I've done that, I'm going to see I replaced my x with a negative x. Did I get the same result? Now what I mean by that is look, look at your starting function. x cubed minus 6x, is that the same exact thing as negative x cubed plus 6x? And it is not. The signs are different. It is not the same thing. So you would just say, nope, that it, this function is not even. Okay. Now we've only tested if the function is even, which it was not. We would have to do a separate test to tell if the function is odd. All right. Let's see if this function is odd. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace our x with a negative x which we've kind of already done up here, so I'll just kind of rewrite it. I'm going to take my original function, which is this one right here, and I'm going to replace the x with a negative x. So I'll have f of negative x equals negative x cubed minus 6 instead of x, negative x. And I would simplify, which we kind of already did, so I'm not going to do it again. I'm just going to write down the answer that we got. Negative x cubed plus 6x. Okay. I've simplified. Um, I'm actually going to uh, write this a little bit different just so that you can see why the next step makes sense. Um, I'm going to write a negative in outside the parentheses, x cubed, and then minus 6x. Now, why did I do this? Because let's see, if I, did, if I were to distribute negative times x cubed, I get negative x cubed. Negative times negative 6x, I get positive 6x. I've just taken a negative out of both. I've written it a different way. It's the same thing. I didn't change any values. I just wrote it a different way. I took a negative out of each of these. I put it on the outside. Okay. And the reason why I did that is because the test to see if something is odd is replace your x with a negative x from your original problem, which we've done and see if you get the negative output result. Now what does that mean? Looking at our original output, our original function, x cubed minus 6x, did we get the same thing, just negative? And if you look at our answer, we still have x cubed minus 6x, we just made the whole thing negative. So in this case, this does pass the test for being an odd function. And then that, that would be it. Now this is just another way to tell if something's even or odd. You could have always used a graph version, look at the graph, see if there's any symmetry, symmetry and do it that way. Or you can do the algebraic way uh, by following these and testing out that way. Okay. There is uh, one more way that I would like to show you um, to test if something is even or odd. I find it actually as the easiest method of the three. So I'll show you in these next examples. So we're going to do Another example, you're more than welcome to do the algebraic method for the next couple of problems or even the graphing method if you want to use a graphing calculator. I'm going to just show you one more method um, to tell if something is an even or odd function. Now if you look at this next function, we don't have a graph, we just have the equation f of x equals x to the fourth power minus 2x squared. Now f of x is just a fancy way to say y. Now all you have to do is look at all of the x variables, we have x to the fourth, minus 2x squared. And an easy way to tell if a function is even or odd is to look at the exponents. We have x to the fourth power, and 4 is an even number, minus 2x to the second power. The exponent 2 is an even number. So the exponents are 4 and 2. Both of those are even. And therefore, this is an even function. And that's it. You don't even have to test for odd because a function can't be even and odd. Because both exponents of x 
are even. You could have done that for the previous problem. We have x to the third power, 3 is odd, minus 6x, well, there's no exponent written, but the exponent is 1. 1 is odd, 3 and 1 are both odd, so this is an odd function, which that's the same answer we got doing it algebraically. So I like this method the best. Um, it's, just, it's super quick. Just look at the exponents, and it'll tell you if it's even or odd. Right. I'm going to do the same thing for these next two ones. They just get a little trickier. Part C, we have x squared, f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. Again, you can graph it if you want to use a graph method. You can do the algebraic method, which we've done here. Or you can just look at the exponents of our x variable. We have x to the second power. So the exponent, 2, we know is even. We have plus 2x. Now, x doesn't have an exponent written on it, but it is x to the first power. So you can write the first power on there if you want. And we know that 1 is an odd number. I don't even need to keep going, but I have an even exponent and an odd exponent. I said on the previous problems, if your exponents are even, then you have an even function. If all your exponents are odd, then you have an odd function. If you have a combination, of even and odd exponents, then this would just be a function that is neither even or odd. And that's it. Okay. All right. And then last one, we have f of x equals 5x to the third power plus 6. Now looking at the exponents of x. We have 5x to the third power. Now 3 is our exponent, and we know that 3 is an odd number. The 5 doesn't make a difference. The coefficients, just like this 2 didn't make a difference, the coefficients don't matter. We just look at the exponents. Now here's where it does get a little tricky. Plus 6. There's no exponent, or in fact, there's not even an x variable on that one. Okay, so what would our, be our exponent? Well, first off, if it was like 2x, well, x is to the first power. We just don't write the first exponent, but it is there. For this problem, there's not an x variable at all. So what could we write without actually changing the value of anything? Well, remember, anything to the 0 power is 1. Like 3 to the 0 power is 1. 100 to the 0 power is 1. x to the 0 power is 1. So if I wanted to write plus 6, times x to the 0 power, it's not going to change anything because 6 times 1 is still 6. I'm not changing the value. I'm just going to write it so that I have a clear what is the x variable and its exponent to go with that term. Okay, and I did that because we have 3 is an odd number. Now, what about the exponent of 0? Well, 0, most people might not know this, but 0 is actually an even number. We have an odd and even exponent. And therefore, once again, this function is neither even or odd. And there's our answer. Okay. All right. Okay. And that wraps up even and odd functions. Okay. The next part of today's uh, chapter is refers to maximum and minimums. Now, you might have ha heard the word maximum and minimums somewhere before in, in math class or in life, really. Um, but there's two types of maximums and minimums. There's absolute maximum and minimums, and there's local maximum and minimums. And that's what we're going to be differentiating on these next couple examples. So first thing I want to do is write down the definition of each of these. The absolute maximum and minimum of a function is really what it sounds. It's the absolute, the overall, overall maximum or minimum. Um, you can even put greatest, meaning maximum, or least, meaning minimum, least y value. of a function. Okay. Now when I say overall, I mean looking at the entire graph, what is the overall greatest and least y value of function? The local maximum and minimum, 
Now, local maximum and minimum, maximum and minimum, minimum still mean greatest and least, but the local, it's just a uh, greatest or least y value within a specified interval. So, not the overall, but it is the greatest or least y value of a function within a specified interval. Specified interval. Okay. All right, so we're given a couple of graphs on this next example, and we're just going to identify the absolute maximum minimum and local maximum minimum if they exist. They don't necessarily have to have each of those terms. Okay. So looking at this first graph, and I'm going to zoom in on this, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what is the absolute maximum. Maximum. Now all you're looking for is the greatest y value on this graph. Greatest y value also means the highest point. So looking at this graph, what is the highest point that you see overall from the entire graph? And most likely you will be able to tell that it is this point right here, 3 comma 6. So the absolute maximum, you can write it as, as such. You can write it as 3 comma 6. We're really just concerned with the y value. So you could have also written it as just y equals 6. Because this is the x coordinate and this is the y coordinate. When we're talking about maximum minimums, we only uh, are concerned about the y value. All right, now we're going to go ahead and figure out what is the absolute minimum of this graph. And the absolute minimum just means the lowest y value, the least y value from the entire graph. So looking at this entire graph, what's the lowest y value that you see? And it should be this point right here, 0, 0,1. It's a closed field dot, so that's important to note. And so overall, the smallest y value that we're going to see is the y value 1. So you could also write it as y equals 1. All right, now the next two vocabulary words, local maximum and local minimum. Let go ahead and write, let's start with the local maximum. And local minimum. Okay, local maximum. Now, other than the point 3 comma 6, is there another greatest point within a specified interval? And now, what I kind of look at is, is there another top of the hill? Think of some hills, you know, hills whenever you go on a mountain. Top of the hills, these are, I would call them top of the hills. Is there another top of the hill, um, per se, in this graph? And essentially, there's not. So that's really the greatest point, the top of the hill. Now, you might be thinking, what about this point 5, comma 5? It goes up again. Now, the thing about local maximum and minimums is that they cannot be endpoints. So I do want to note that. I should probably write that in the definition. Local maximum and minimums cannot be endpoints. Absolute maximum and minimums can, but local maximum and minimums cannot. So other than the 3, 6, which we've already listed as the absolute maximum, there is no other high points on this graph. So for local maximum, there is none. So you can just say none. Now, the next one is local minimum. Local minimum, well, the absolute minimum was 0, 1. Looking at the graph, if you were just kind of looking at pieces of it, specify intervals, would there be another low point that we could refer to? Or in other words, is there any bottom of the hills? So I kind of made this graph for the top of the hills. When I say bottom of the hills, I mean, are there any bottom peaks of the hills? And if you look, there actually is one. There is one right here. It is 4, 4. So if, even though this is not the lowest minimum overall, if you were to just look at this part of the graph, this specified interval, that would be a minimum point within just this interval alone. If that was the only part of the graph we were looking at, this would be a local minimum. So our local minimum is 4, 4. Or you can just write it as y equals 4 since we're really just concerned about the y value. And there's our answer. Okay. And I'll go ahead and label it as such. 
All right. All right, next one, example number B. Um, in case you can't see that, I do want to point out we have 1, 2. It does connect down here, and this is an empty, unfilled dot. And then it closes back up at 5, 3 with a closed filled dot. So I just want to make that clear in case the printing didn't go through. And I'll go ahead and actually label these as well. Absolute, short, that's short for absolute max. And this is our absolute min. Okay. All right, on the next example, uh, back to this one, I'm going to go ahead and just try to figure out what are each of these four vocabulary words according to this next graph. And I'm going to go ahead and write it right underneath. Let's start with the absolute maximum. Now, the absolutes, in my opinion, are always easiest to identify. because There's no tricks or intervals you need to look at. Just look at this entire graph overall. And what is the greatest y value that you see? What's the highest that the graph goes? And that is this point right here, 5, 3. That's the highest the graph goes. So our absolute maximum is 5, 3. Or you can just specify the y value, y equals 3. Okay? I'm going to label it as such. Absolute max. Now the absolute minimum, looking at this entire graph, what is the lowest y value that you see? And this one's actually a bit tricky. I want to make sure that I zoom in good enough so that you can see this good. The absolute minimum, the absolute lowest the graph goes. Now most would say, well, it's right here. It's 3 comma 1. And you would be right. That is the lowest that the graph goes. However, I can't list 3 comma 1 as an answer. And the reason for that is because 3 comma 1 is not actually a part of the graph. That's why it's an empty unfilled dot because it's not a part of the graph. So I would love to say 3 comma 1 is the lowest the graph goes, but I can't necessarily say that. Now what can I say? Well, you might be thinking, well, can't you just do like this point right here? Well, because not necessarily because what about the one before it? And what about all the decimals? We don't actually have a lowest point if we're not including 3 comma 1. We can't say it's going to be uh, 3 comma 1.5 because what about 1.4 or 1. All the decimals between it. There's not really a sure way to identify a specific lowest number. So when this happens, there is no absolute minimum. And that is totally fine. Okay. Now, for the local maximum, you're just looking to see, are there any other high points? Think of it as the, remember, the top of the hills within this graph. And there's not. You might be thinking, what about 1, 2? Remember, local minimum and maximums cannot be endpoints. So we can't use this endpoint 1, 2 as a local maximum or minimum. So aside from the one we've already labeled, there's no other maximums. So in this case, there would be none. Okay. And local minimum, same thing. There's no other low points. I mean, 3, 1, we can't even, we don't even have an absolute minimum. So there's no other low points that are not endpoints that we can specify within a specified interval. So there would be none as well. And that's it. All right. All right, we're going to go ahead and do uh, just about two more examples. And then I'll leave the third one for you guys, okay? All right, so on the next page, the next example, we have another graph. And we're going to start by figuring out what is the absolute maximum and absolute minimum of this graph, if any. Now, absolute maximum, just looking at this graph, what's the overall highest point that you see, the highest y value? And it is this point right here, 5, 4. So that's our absolute maximum. Or you can just write y equals 4. Now I'm going to label it. Um, the absolute minimum is the absolute lowest that the graph goes. Now, this one is tricky because if you look here, we have 1, 1, that's a low point. We also have 2, 1. This is actually a straight line. It's not even curvaceous. It's just completely straight. Both of these are the lowest points. And actually, every point in between is the lowest point. So they're both equally just as low as the other one. They both have a y value of 1. So that's why, in that case, I wouldn't even write an ordered pair. I would just write the lowest y value, since they have the same y value. 
is just y equals 1 because they both have the same height and so does every decimal in between so you don't actually have a specific point you can call out and refer to you just have a y value to refer to and that's totally fine okay all right the next part is the local maximum now looking at this graph are there any other low peaks that we can identify any other bottom of the hills and aside from what we've already said as far as the absolute minimum there is no other low peaks or um, dips so in this case there would be none or maximum sorry highest points and there's no other high points and then local minimum same thing applies there's no other low points that we can refer to there would be none as well okay all right all right there are two more examples D and E I'm going to go ahead and just do part E because I think that one's the most trickiest and I'll leave part D if you'd like to do that one um, and try to attempt it you are more than welcome to just so you can get some more practice but I'm going to go ahead and do oops, sorry part E next all right all right so part E is a little trick because there's actually a couple of things to note notice that there's an empty dot at 1 4 and there's an empty dot at 2 comma 2 so the first thing I'm going to try to figure out is what is the absolute maximum now looking at this graph what is the overall highest point that you and you might be thinking oh it's one comma four and you'd be right that is the highest point I see on this graph overall but it's an empty unfilled dot which means it's not part of the graph so I can't list it as being a maximum of the graph if it's not actually a part of the graph now you might be thinking, okay what about this other point four three and that necessarily wouldn't be right because we'd be missing what about the point right underneath one comma four that's on the graph that's part of the solid line what about one comma three point nine or three point nine nine and again there's no specific number that we can say is right before four so in this case there would just be none okay. and then absolute minimum is the lowest the graph goes overall what's the lowest y value the graph contains so if you look at the lowest the graph goes, you might be thinking, well, the graph goes down here. Notice that that is an arrow. And remember what arrows mean. Arrows mean that the graph actually continues on forever. It does not have a lowest point or stopping point. It's going to continue on in the downwards direction and go on forever. So there is no lowest minimum point that the graph stops at. There would just be none. And that is totally fine. Okay. All right, what about the next vocabulary word, local maximum? Now, we said there was not an absolute maximum, but what about a local maximum? Is there another high point? Maybe think of like the top of the hill. If you look at just kind of a specified interval of the graph, and they can't be endpoints. Now, this point, 4, 3, that's the top of the hill. It's another, like if I were to just look at only this part of the graph, that would be a maximum. If I'm looking just at this specified interval, that would be the maximum. So 4, 3 is actually a local maximum. Or you can write it as y equals 3, since we're just concerned about the y value. And that would be our local maximum. And then lastly, our local minimum. Is there a low point? That's not an end point. Think of like the bottom of a hill um, that we can identify. So if you look at the graph, there actually is another bottom point this and that would be this two comma two so if I look at just this part of the graph that would be a low point that would be a minimum within just this specified interval however two comma two is an empty unfilled dot which means it's not actually a part of the graph so I can't say that it's a minimum of the graph if it's not even a part of the graph and we don't know what points are right around it we, we can't actually give a specific number so in this case we would just say none So not every graph has an absolute max or min or even a local max or min, and that is okay. And then if you'd like, I'll go ahead and uh, leave this one for you guys to do, very similar to the previous one. Um, just know that that is an arrow. And I'll leave the answer key in the filled out notes if you'd like to check.